joy or happiness, success or failure, peace or dismay. The foundations of our life rest on the words we receive. A word of hope and guidance, translated from the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. You are listening to a word of faith with Bishop Macedo. Hello, my dear friends. May God bless all of you, and may He and may He bless you with the meditation of His Word in this very moment. Very well. So. We, we want to meditate with you today on the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 3, specifically chapter 3, that shows the greatness of what it is to serve God, the glory and the power to serve the Almighty, the Almighty God. This is the story. You may have heard, obviously, but there are many who do not know, and we are going to read. It is a bit long, but it is good and worth to listen and know it. So, chapter 3 of the book of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits. So it was a very high and tall image. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent together, together the officials, the governors, and the captains, the judge, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces, the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. So, imagine. The president of your country says to build a great statue just like this, like they would normally do, like on a fair where they, be, where they put big characters and they go about having, inviting everyone to come and enjoy music and so on. And then, so then, the king told them to bring all the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the governors, the sheriffs, all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together before that image that he had set up. So all the authorities of Babylon they came and they were before, they stood before the image for the dedication of the image of Nebuchadnezzar. So these, these are the details that you have to pay attention to. Then a herald cried out aloud to you its commanders, O peoples, nations, and languages which they are planning to do as the Antichrist is to come, as the, uh, the Antichrist is soon to come, will be done just like this. So it says, at, that at the time you hear the sound of the cornet flute, so they are going to put all kinds of music to play, like in a, in a carnival or like in a fair. When you go, when you go to a, a fair, you hear the music playing. So then they, they played the music, the instruments and loud music and all kinds of people around drinking and all those. Everyone would be having the feast or the time of the party. 
all together at peace or enjoy the moment in the name of peace. And all people came together and he said more. The king Nebuchadnezzar had said all the people of nations, language, race and said whoever and whoever does not fall down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, so the moment when the party began and they began, the music bands began to play the music, so all the people, the nations, the sheriffs, the judges, all those who were important in that time, the rich, all the society, they were there, concentrated in one accord to hear the band, the music band to play for them to then fall or kneel down before Nebuchadnezzar's image, the image that he had set up. So they did that. They were obeying that command that Nebuchadnezzar had told them to do. But it was in that time that certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. So, in that time, the Jews here, they were considered like the true Christians of today, those who are loyal and faithful to God and, and true servants of God. So, it's important for you to know this. Because all this has to do with loyalty of those who were faithful to God, just like in that time, even in Babylon, there were the Jews who were faithful to God. So, what happened? So, these Jews, or in the moment when the sound, the, the music began to play, so the Chaldeans came to the king and said, you gave, O king, you have made a decree. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But when the band, the music band, they pass, when they pass and begin to play the music before your image, you said that whoever does not fall down and worship, whoever disobey this command, will be thrown into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. So, there are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Mijak, and Abednego, they have not regarded, they have not regarded you, they do not serve your gods. So, they do not serve your gods or to the band or the music band or even the image that you have set up, the golden image that you have set up. They do not regard Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded Shadrach and Mijak and Abednego to be brought to him. And they then they brought these men before the king. Is it true that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image? It is true that we do not worship the image in which you have built or set up. And, once again, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, said, Now, in this time, are you willing to bow down as soon as the music begins to play? Will you bow down then? Because if you do not do it, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. And then Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, more, I want to see who will be 
the God who can save you. Pay attention, my dear friends. The question of Nebuchadnezzar's question to these three men who were faithful. I want to see who is the God who can deliver you from the burning fiery furnace. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said like this. No, pay attention. Oh, huh? Nebuchadnezzar. Look at how they insulted. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. We do not give you an answer in this matter. <laughs> look how they trusted. Huh? How, look how they trusted. We do not need to give you the answer in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us of your hand, O King. But even if he does not, even if he does not, look at their faith. Be it known to you, O King, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. We will not worship the golden image you have set up, nor will we will give heed or give heed to the music. And this was like an insult to the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. He was there before all, all the nation, all the, the authorities. The main authorities, it was the governors, the sheriffs, the senators, you know, the rich ones. And these three men, these three men, they insulted. That is my way of saying. They insulted Nebuchadnezzar's authority, saying, We will not bow down before the image that you have set up or even to heed to the music that is playing. And even if God does not save, even if our God does not save, we are going to remain serving Him because we will not bow down to the gods of this world. When Nebuchadnezzar heard this, he was full of fury and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded the most mighty man in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their trousers, their coats, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. So they were, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were dressed for the king's party. And they were, and the soldiers tied them up, tied all these three men with the hat, everything they brought on, and threw them into the burning, fiery furnace. So, they were thrown in there, and the fire was raised seven times more. So, the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot. The flame of the fire, killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the flame killed the soldiers. And they were now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were tied up, and they were bound and fell down into the midst of the firing furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spoke, and said to his counselor, did, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, 
He answered and said, But I see four men loose and walking in the midst of the fire, and they are unharmed. And they are unharmed. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. See, my dear friends, see, my dear friends, that when we manifest a faith that is firm, a faith that is based upon the Word of God, not based on a religion, not based on a denomination, not based on philosophy or ideas, or based on a tradition. When faith is based firmly upon the Word of God, so then, when the pandemic or when the music band comes about and brings forth the image, an image of a, a king, and everyone has to bow down all the authorities, all the nations, everyone, they, ha, they are bound to worship that idol. They were all there, bowing down on their knees, showing reverence to what the, the music band was playing to. And when that happened, when these things happen, where everyone has to bow down before the situation, everyone, everyone begins to follow what others are following. And the truth and reality is, is the world we live in. This is the world that you are currently in. I live in this world as well. That we have to do exactly as they say. And in the world, we have two kinds of people. Those who are truly of God, those who are truly of the faith in God, and those who are not. Those who have their faith moved by emotions. A faith that is moved by actions, that kind of faith, that they say they believe in God, and they say, they say, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not be in want, yet they are in need of everything. And these two kinds of people, they are proof, or these two kinds of people, they are tested before God, or before this situation. On one side, the music band is playing a direction, showing what to do. And on the other side, we have the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel. And who are you going to stand? To whom are you going to bow down to? Who are you going to serve? If you do not bow down to the God of this world, or the situation of this world that has, or the image of this world that has voice, that has mouth but doesn't speak, that has eyes but doesn't see, if you incline and you don't listen or don't give in to these gods, so then you are going to be destroyed. You are going to be thrown into a fiery furnace. You are going to be persecuted. You are going to be criticized. They are going to do things, fake news against you or about you. You are going to be hated with all their strength, with all their anger against you. But you can be certain that if by any chance you are faithful, truly faithful to God, God comes from His throne and walk and stand by you inside of the furnace. That's what happened. God, in the form of the Lord Jesus Christ, came down and walked inside of the fiery furnace together with Shadrach, Mijak, and Abednego. So God honors those who honor Him. You don't see Him, you don't feel Him, you don't touch, but you have the faith upon His Word, and you trust in His Word no matter what. So then, you do not go down, or you do not bow down before the images 
or the dances to the music of the world because you are firm and you are loyal to God. Now that is the story that we are reading here. It's written in the Bible. It happened. This is a fact. It happened in the time of Babylon, in the, in the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, and in the time of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And nowadays is happening in our lives, in this pandemic. The pandemic is running loose in the world and destroying many people, destroying many lives. And of course, those who have their faith based upon the Word of God, they take charge of this Word. They will prevail because the Lord Jesus comes down and walks with them and with those throughout the cities and the pandemic doesn't touch these, does not reach and touch those who are faithful and show a true faith upon the Lord Jesus. And obviously, that there are those people that believe in the Lord Jesus, they are faithful and loyal to God, but they are only faithful and loyal, but because of their weakness, because of a faith that is, let's put this way, emotional faith, so then many, they end up suffering the consequences of the pandemic, meaning they have faith, but their faith is not like the faith of Shadrach, Mijak, and Abednego that confronted the king of Babylon. Even though they had high positions, they were well recognized by them as high authorities during the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. And yet, they did not bow down before that image and the music as it played. They did not give in to it because they did not dance into that music and they even ran the risk of being killed. They did not, they did not bow down and did not give in to that situation. God came and walked with them when they were thrown into the fiery furnace. And they were there in the fiery furnace because they were loyal to God. And because of their honor to God, so God had to show Himself personally. And then He was determined, defined the word that God told with the prophet Eli, saying, he who honors me, I will honor them. But those who despise me will be despised or lightly esteemed. So you have a clear picture, a clear picture of a true expression of the living God. And that is the greatest reality. Shadrach, Mijak, and Abednego they were three Jews who were loyal to God. And because of that, they were honored by the presence of the Lord Jesus who came down where they were inside of the fiery furnace so that the flames of the fiery furnace would not burn, not even their hair. Now look, because of this faith, the Bible says, it reads, when the king approached the door of the, the door, he said, Shadrach, Mijak, and Abednego, servants of the Most High, he recognized, Nebuchadnezzar recognized that Shadrach, Mijak, and Abednego were servants of the Most High God and told them, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Mijak, and Abednego came out of the midst. The officials, governors, being gathered together and saw that these men upon whose body the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head 
seized. Neither were their coats changed, nor had they smelled of fire even come upon them. <laughs> this is very powerful. It's a lot of power here. This is a lot of faith. <laughs> and Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, be worshipped and blessed. So Nebuchadnezzar recognized God's greatness right there because of the loyal testimony of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the servants of the Most High. And he said that the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him. So God sent his angel to deliver. So look at the difference of his servants and just servants. And many, majority, are just servants, just of mouth. It says here, Nebuchadnezzar saying, they have defiled, defied the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dung hill because there is no other god who can deliver in this way. So, friends, see here. And Nebuchadnezzar promoted the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. So you can understand now that this is how faith works. Faith is exactly this. A person is faithful in good days or in bad days. They had faith. They had faith throughout all that time to be placed in, in places of high positions during the, king, the king's reign. But they also had faith to confront the king, who was the high authority, denying, denying to bow down to the image that he had made. That's the truth. And is what is written. Jesus says, he who is not for me is not against me. So what is your faith, my dear friends? Maybe you find, maybe you are living in an environment or working in an environment like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everyone, they are dancing to this world. And you don't. And because you're not dancing to the music of this world, so then you are mistreated, you face injustice, you are hated, they bully you, they bully you, they make jokes about you. Everyone, everyone jokes around with you. I remember this also happened to me when I used to work. I used to work in this previous job while all of them, my bosses, they would, they would mock my faith in Jesus. <laughs> this is very interesting. We suffer, we go through a whole lot, but we, we do not allow our faith aside. We don't put our trust aside, our reverence and loyalty to God, our fear to the one who has saved us. And only those who have God's Spirit, only those who have God's Spirit, has this kind of faith because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith, of the intelligent faith, of this faith that is solid, this faith that does not bend before no God 
O God of this world does not bend to no image of wood, metal, gold, silver, whatever kind. They do not bend because they are these gods who have eyes, don't see, ears, but don't hear. They have mouth, but does not speak, have feet, but does not walk. So how can a God of stone, of wood, clay, to have conditions to save someone that depends on us to move them, to move them, to carry them. So, a God that is useless is the God of this world. So, friends, think about it. Think about, use your intelligence. Maybe you are a person who faithful on your religion, you are committed on your religion, but your faith cannot confront such situation like this. And then you end up inclining and believing on whatever the world says, whatever the world is playing. And then when a pandemic like this happens, comes to you in full and takes, destroy families, takes those who are innocent away. That's how it goes. And those who honor me, God says, I will honor. But he who despises me will be lightly esteemed. That is how God works. That is the faith of God. This is how it is written. And this is how it takes place. Whether it is in the Old Testament, it also happened in the New Testament, and it happens nowadays as well. Whoever honors God, he says, will honor, I will honor. And he who despises me will be despised. And when the difficulty comes, a person gets desperate and do not know what to do. Majority of people are facing this. But here we have a great and extraordinary lesson for those who have the real faith and an awakening to those who have small faith or little faith. So the same faith that you apply in this world is the faith that you have in God. But you can change the situation. God bless all of you. And you can read what we just read in the book of Daniel, chapter 3. You will enjoy it. God bless all of you. What's been taking place in the world today is unprecedented. Fires on the streets of a city in its fourth night of unrest. Viruses has decimated millions of lives around the world. Natural catastrophes, wars, financial instability, and broken families has made people completely disoriented. Depression has increased as never before. I started to get depressed, and it progressively got worse. Addictions has taken over people's reasoning. I lost the apartment. The girl, the dog, I basically gave everything up for heroin. I've given all the way to where I just had change, and I was like, okay, cash is changing, and I turned it into $2, and then took $2 back in, maybe I can get that money back. Turning them hostages of their own feelings. I've always been like addicted to something, whether it was shopping or, or Facebook. I did an oxy, I got addicted right away. Religion has been proven just inefficient. People have become like a dry land. But for those people, Jesus expressly says, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. The water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This water is the Holy Spirit, and you can also become this fountain of living water. To be a fountain is much more than just to be satisfied. It is to be a blessing to others, an oasis in this dry world. In the midst of uncertainty, searching for peace can seem impossible. Everything around you clouds your judgment and one can end up looking in the wrong places. I grew up very, um, you know, searching for happiness, but at the time I didn't know that I was unhappy or that I was empty. For me, it was just like, there was a thought in my mind, there must be something more to life, you know, there must be. So I even ended up searching on Google, you know, things to make me happy. 
Put your mind at rest. The Sunday morning service can be your next stop to finding peace. I remember when I sat down on that chair, I felt peace. Today I'm very happy, I feel secure, I feel protected and at peace. In biblical times, when the olive trees were ready, the olives were harvested and taken to a stone press. After being pressed, the oil would start to come out and when it stopped flowing, it was put into bottles and set aside. Then, the pressure on top of the olive sack was increased. This process was repeated three times over. However, the first extraction produced the best quality oil. That oil would not be sold or used for any other purpose. It was separated and consecrated to God for the exclusive use in the temple of the Lord. With this, we can learn that God wants our best, the first, from us. When we honour Him with the first part of everything, we demonstrate our total trust in Him and that He will always supply our needs.